We want to talk to Chris Chan- Tanji. He is um, he's a guy who runs Alice Springs Film and TV out of Australia. The only reason why I know this film company is because of the Alice Springs Chicken at Outback. And that's all I know. And if that's what they do in Alice Springs, I am all for a film company about it. But that's just for us Australians that know Australia so very, very well. Mm-hmm. Uh, Chris, is um, he runs this uh, film uh, unit in Australia, and he's the guy who captured, I don't know if you've seen it, a fire tornado. And it's, it's, it's an amazing piece of video of a tornado in, out of fire. I mean, it looks like, uh, you know, it looks like the Ten Commandments. Well, he received a phone call. And we're going to let him tell the rest of the story. Hi, Chris. How are you? G'day, Glenn. Good morning. It's uh, five minutes into good morning here, so tomorrow. <laughs> it, it's, uh, uh, it's midnight there? Y- yeah, it's uh, a Saturday morning here, five by five minutes. So I believe because I it's still Friday morning, at the beginning. Good morning. <laughs> I believe since it's still, it's still uh, Friday here, we should all become Australian and uh, mm-hmm. take the rest of the day off. So, Chris, you captured. You must post me, post me some of this chicken too. <laughs> yes, um, you 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 captured this fire tornado. Tell me about uh, the phone call that you got. Okay, yeah, I got. Uh, well, it was actually an email. I got an email from uh, the office of uh, Al Gore, um, wanting to use it uh, in his presentations for the next five years and his PowerPoint presentations. And um, I thought, well. I, I, I knew what he did, and I thought, well, that, that sounds a little interesting. I better have a look into a, a little bit more of this and research uh, uh, his activities in the past and uh, what he would be likely to be using it for. So uh, once I got through that process, I really just had to come to the conclusion that I, I had to say no because, um, you know, this, this was nothing to do with global warming or climate change or climate disruption, whatever it's Fantastic. called these days, but um, it, it was a very localised event, a highly localised event that really had nothing to do with even weather, let alone climate change. Okay, so tell me what, what caused this. Uh, you're, you're, it's a fire NATO? Is that, that's what we call it here. What is it called? Well, uh, yeah, they call it a fire NATO. I mean, the proper name apparently is Fire Whirl. Um, I, I knew nothing about them. I'm like you until I saw this thing happening in front of me. I thought, what on earth is that? But... Uh, yeah, it's apparently called a fire whirl, and um, not many people have actually captured them, uh, particularly up this close, and um, and for that long. And it was uh, the, the particular circumstances here were that it was on a cattle station or cattle ranch, and at the bottom end of this cattle station, uh, this fire had been burning for about 10 days, probably deliberately lit, so it wasn't even a natural fire uh, in that sense. And they'd been looking after this particular mesa, this big uh, mesa near Ayers Rock down here. Ayers Rock's only 80, 80 kilometres away from it, or 50 mile away. And um, they'd been protecting that habitat. They'd been living on this cattle ranch for about 55 years. And there's a particular grass there called Spinifex, which burns incredibly hot. And um, they'd been protecting that particular patch. And when this fire came in from the north and hit that patch... Uh, there's probably a big build-up of resin and oil, which is what causes this grass to, to burn so intensely hot, uh, that it probably built up for 50 years. So it was an incredibly localised event. Uh, it caused this, uh, you know, I guess you could say a unique event of that sort needs some sort of unique circumstances, and that's, that's what it was. It was a, a unusual um, fuel load at the base of it. Okay, so it, it happened... Al Gore writes you, you check him out. You're a guy who's, you don't know, you're not paying much attention to global warming. You don't know if it's happening or not happening. What happens mm. next? Well, uh, I, I got back to them and explained my circumstances and, and, and they had told me that Mr. Gore himself had seen the, the video and wanted, wanted it personally. Um, so anyway, I thought that was all over. And then a, a month later, I, I got a, an email from somebody saying that they were from the, uh, a non-profit organisation who was doing a, an internet uh, show and they'd like to use it and uh, wanted to pay me to use it and they, they called themselves the Climate Reality Project. Um, when I uh, did a bit of research on this, I found that it was actually 
the founder and chairman was actually Al Gore. <laughs> um, then I did a little bit of research on the producer uh, and I actually got back to her and, and said, look, you know, I don't know what's wrong with the in- internal bits of Mr. Gore's organisation, but, uh, you know, you're asking me again and, and we actually had, a, a, a you know, quite a, a big concern about it before. And the producer actually, uh, I thought, well, maybe she she must be uh, she must be a scientist. Uh, I checked that out. No, she's not a scientist. I thought, well, maybe she's made science films before. No. Uh, and I thought, well, maybe she's made natural documentaries, nature documentaries, or something. No. Uh, it turned out that her last job producing was on Inspector Gadget Two, mm. and she lives in Los Angeles. Mm. Yeah, she's a uh, Hollywood producer who lives in Los Angeles, <clears throat> and. Um, I found that a bit astonishing as well. But uh, anyway, the bottom line was I had to say no again because really to use this in that context is, uh, you know, if I, if I used it myself in that context, I'd, I'd say, I, you know, I'd feel like I was deceiving people really. Right. Now, um, Chris, I don't know if you know about me at all here in um, the United States. But um, I do, Glenn. I used to, I used to watch you on uh, on television for oh, many years. God bless you. Well, I um, uh, we, we we get all that down here. <laughs> well, I, well, I don't know. I mean, the pictures are upside down when you get them. Um, <laughs> the uh, <laughs> the uh, we we started a network called the Blaze, and we're creating fire effects kind of like this, you know, for different reasons. And um, I, I I don't know what you're charging for this video, but I'd like to I'd like to see if we could lease it from you just just for the sole purpose of pissing Al Gore off. <laughs> Man, I have read about you guys, and I've read about all the stuff you're doing, yeah. and uh, I'm with you 100%, 100%. Really? And you guys get it for nothing. Oh, wow. <laughs> you are, wow. You are the best. Thank you. Thank you. You are the best. <laughs> Um, so what are you doing yeah. to what are you doing to protect it? Because these guys are really shady. Are you, are you, have you talked to anybody about protecting this um, so they don't use it? Well, it's a little bit different. The, the copyright law is a little bit different in Australia in, in that we don't even have to put copyright 2012 and your name on it. It's automatically copyright as soon as you uh, create the work. They call it the work. Hmm. And so it automatically is mine. And I'm, I'm the only copyright holder. And anything you've seen anywhere basically has been licensed by me. Um, so if he was to use it, um, it would be a breach of copyright. So wow, what that's would happen great. then, whether a little little guy in the middle of the outback could uh, take it up against a billionaire, I don't know. But maybe maybe that's that could be the little uh, the, the swap deal we do for the fire NATO. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> Your lawyers and uh, the fire NATO. <laughs> that's great. Um, Chris, thank you so much, and thank you for um, taking a stand and uh, and and being smart with it. Um, in the world where people will go for a fast buck, um, for you to be responsible with what you have is uh, is inspiring, and I appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Well, I just love you, you guys, and and the uh, the your your slogan. Uh, I can't recall it right at this moment, but I saw it yesterday to do with truth. And yeah, truth mm-hmm. lives I think here. That's exactly what. Exactly, and I think that's exactly what we need in this world, and we need to know what we're looking at, what we're listening to, you know, how do we know otherwise? And Chris, uh, the the uh, video is actually part of a uh, larger documentary, right? I- isn't it part of a uh, a, a movie? No, 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 it, 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 no, 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 it, no. I was actually location scouting um, a movie, but oh, okay, uh, that's where I got that. Day yeah. That I was location scouting, so, so I don't know where it's going yet. But, so if people yeah. want to see it. Where where can they go? If they want to see the fire tornado, uh, if they just search, um, if they just search fire tornado Australia, uh, it, there's one on Vimeo, there's one on YouTube. I think, yeah. Great, thank you. We'll link to it on the Blaze. Thank you so much, Chris. God bless. Fantastic, thank you, Glenn. You bet. Bye bye. I think we should. He's great. I think we should license that thing and I think we should so put too. it on a commercial. And the commercial just should be, we we really don't have use for this, but Al Gore wanted it really bad, <laughs> <laughs> and we have it. And Al, you can't have it. it it's interesting to, it, to to hear that because Gore obviously doesn't care about the science involved. There is no science involved. It's not about global warming, but he would have made it about that. Oh, yeah. I mean, he's, to, to yes. think about what he would have said about this, 
it look it is so bad that the atmosphere is creating fire tornadoes. <laughs> He, I would mean, he, would he would have, have done, done it. He would have done that. He would have done it. All right. But we know that now because of the call from the future. Our, the call, call from, from the, the future. future. Chris Tang. He called from the future this morning. <laughs> that's right. He did. He called from tomorrow morning. Oh, that's so right. So he knows. Wow. 